All right, I'm the Fly Rate Master, and today, finding a new shop, and today we're talking about the interview to get that new job. All right, this is gonna be part one of a two-part series. Second part is all gonna be about making sure you're making a good choice before you take the job. This one's gonna be about seeing whether you need to just pack your stuff up and go in the middle of the interview kind of stuff. And we're gonna split this one up into two parts. First, we're gonna talk about if you're a new technician, you're just trying to get your foot in the door, what you need to look for on that first shop. Second part, we're gonna get into more experienced techs and what they should look for. As a starting technician, you need to look for a little bit more of a unique situation for a starting technician. You need to find a shop that's going to help train you. They're going to offer in-house training. They're going to offer external training. They're going to help you grow. They're going to give you the tools to help you grow as a technician. If you're just going in blind and good luck, probably not the best situation. I mean, a lot of guys have done that. A lot of and, and women have gone into a shop, sink or swim, one or the other. It's either you're, you're going to do something, so figure it out. It's not the best way to start in the industry. The best way to start in the industry is if you go to a shop where they've got a shop foreman, a senior technician, someone that's going to help you on a daily basis grow as a technician, give you in-house training, help you out when you're struggling. Another thing you need to look for is you don't want too busy of a shop. If you go into a shop that is uber busy, as, as good of their intentions are, the fact of the matter is, is you're just not gonna get that training very well because they're just not going to have the time. The shop foreman's trying to knock cars out. The you know the other technicians are doing the same thing. They're just knocking, knocking, knocking cars out, and you're going to be left to sink or swim. So you want to get a shop. You want to go into a shop that is busy but not super busy. You don't want a shop that the guys are are you know running nonstop from when the doors open to when they close and the guys are staying late to get jobs knocked out, stuff like that. It, it, it just is not conducive to a young technician growing. What happens in those situations is you wind up changing oil, doing brakes, and you just don't progress. Now, if you don't want to progress, you just want to do tires and brakes and oil changes and stuff like that, well, Uber Busy Shop is a great place to go because you're going to do a lot of it. Experienced technicians. When you go in for an interview at a shop, very important. Not only are they interviewing you, you are interviewing them. Meaning, ask questions. Lots of questions. You need to know as much about that shop as you can find out. And it's important when you're talking to them, not just listen to the answers, but how they answer the question. Ask them, what are your technicians bill on an average week? Oh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 kind of a big red flag. If they can't go, oh, my top guy does 70 hours a week, Bubba Joe Bob does 45 hours a week, but he's kind of slow, so we give him a lot of the, the you know, this kind of work, and dude over here does, you know, 55 hours. If they're hemming and hawing on any answer, it, it should make you question it. If they're hesitant, if they're not forthright with an answer. Now, sometimes they may not know. I mean, if you're interviewing with a, you know, absentee boss, he may not know those answers off the top of his head. But if you're interviewing with the shop manager, he should know what every technician is doing. All right, next big one, why are you looking for a tech? It, it seems like a simple reason, 
why they're replacing a tech. Are they just that busy and they need more labor? Adding a tech because this guy's wife got transferred to New Jersey or wherever and they lost him. What's the reason they're hiring a tech? Again, look into not just the answer, but how they answer it. You know, if they're hemming and hawing, well, they don't want to say. You know, chances are it was, well, dude got pissed off because we, you know, shorted him on this car and that car, and he got tired of us doing it over and over again. When they hesitate, you got to hesitate and go into work for them. Another question, how long-term are the employees? If the shop has a bunch of employees that are brand new, red flag. If they're turning over technicians that fast, there is a reason. Either too much drama, not enough money, poor equipment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, next question. What shop equipment does a shop have? How new is it? What was the last piece of equipment the shop bought? Again, look into what they say and how they say it. If they're like, well, we haven't bought any new equipment in a while, what was the last one you bought? He can't remember. Probably not too recently they've bought anything. What scan tools do you the shop have? What scopes? If you're going in as a diagnostic technician, it's important to know that. If they don't have any equipment, they're going to rely on you, which means your paycheck needs to go up. Big one, what information system do you use? All data, Mitchell, Identifix, etc. It doesn't matter what they have. You just need to make sure they have an information system. If they don't have an information system, they're not going to pay you. They're not a place you want to work. Tour the shop. Now, this is important not just to get an idea of what bays you're going to be working in. It's going to be also about looking around the shop. Is it nasty? Is it filled with junk parts? Is it, you know, are there cars that really shouldn't be on the road on those lifts? Are the lifts in good shape? Is the equipment in good shape? Another flag, they said, oh yeah, our equipment's like, you know, within a couple years old, and you go out in the shop and it looks like the AC machine was from the Nixon era. Again, a little flag there. How does, how does what they said compare with the tour? You know, they're talking about, oh yeah, we're seeing all these, you know, 2014s and this and this and this. We're doing all this maintenance work and, and you go out in the shop and there's a bunch of 92 Corollas or whatever, you know, whatever pieces of junk are prevalent in your area. You know, you go into a uh, shop and there's nothing but tore up DeVille's, probably not the best place to work, unless you really like working on DeVille's. I personally don't. But again, is there nice cars in the shop? Good. Junk? Not so good. If you're looking, if you're going to work for a shop, you want customers that have nice, but not super new cars, because those are the customers that are going to pay to fix them, whereas guys with piece of junk, hoopties, they're not spending any money. Their main concern is spending as little as possible to keep it on the road. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about is on your way in and your way out, look at the cars in the parking lot. It's important for what you see or what you don't see. If you look around and their back lot is full of junked old cars that are obviously abandoned, it's not a place you want to work. If you look back there and there's a bunch of cars that are waiting to be picked up, that means they're busy. Again, look around their parking lot. Junk or nice late model cars that probably need to be fixed and customers are willing to fix them. Don't just take it at face value. You gotta look at everything involving the shop. Now in part two, we're gonna talk about 
stuff you can do to make sure what on your initial interview, your initial impressions of the shop, if they're still valid. So we'll talk about that in part two. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like it, hit the subscribe button. Make sure and hit that bell notification so you get notified when I put out a new video. If you didn't like this video, give me a thumbs down. Comments are always appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.